Hello, everybody. So let's start out by just taking a look at the scratch screen for those people who may have never been here before. This is what you first will see when you go to scratch.mit.edu. You will not have this lavender colored teacher bar, but everything else will look about like this. This is my teacher interface. And when you get to scratch, it's going to, if you click on create, it's going to open up a default work area template for you to start a project. So this is what everybody sees if they just say make a new project or click on create. So let's take a look at the layout of this. On the top you have your toolbar which is, has ways to sa save your files, edit your files. There's some great tutorials you can take a look at here. This is the name of your file which you can change. So I'm going to say demo today whatever and this allows you to share your project it's private to you until you choose to share it with the world over here on the uh, far right you have your folder button this will if you click on this this will show you an inventory of all the work that you've been doing so far I've got a, you know, hundreds of projects of here you might not have any yet but they will all show up there let me go back and let's take a look down to the right hand side here this is called your stage so on the stage they always have a default sprite the sprite is the character or sometimes it's letters it's an object that can be manipulated and moved around on the stage with code which is what we'll be doing later on so you can have lots of different sprites it just starts out with the default scratch sprite which they call sprite one uh, but if you want to add other sprites, you do that down below here, which is in your object area. Down here is where you're going to put the different objects that you're going to be controlling and using as part of your Scratch program. And on the right hand side of that is your stage. That's how do you want your, your background to look. Right now it's a plain white backdrop, so it's just showing a plain white backdrop. But if you go to here, you can choose different sprites or backdrops. There's a whole library of available sprites that comes with Scratch, so I can just pick one and add it in if I want. Or you can later on learn how to draw your own or import them from places outside of the Scratch program or from other Scratch projects. Same with backgrounds. You can go to the background and they give you a whole list of possible backgrounds you can have and you can choose to use those or you can bring in your own or, in, or draw your own for that matter. So this is uh, the, the right hand side where you have your stage and you have your objects. And then in the middle, this is the key area. This is where all your coding is done. There's nothing in here right now because I haven't written any code, but you would be dragging out something, for example, like a, a green flag clicked is a key one a lot of people use. That's how you start a program. So if I did that, I could make my, for example, my scratch cat say hello. And so when I click on the green flag, well, it's actually Ben here, the character. That's the one I have selected that says hello. So there's lots of other things you can do. And that's the programming and coding is done from these blocks on the left. The blocks are divided into categories and they're color coded. So the top category is motion, having them move. So for example, if I want my uh, Ben character here to move to the right 10 steps, so then let's make it 50 steps to make it a little bit more obvious. I'll get him over here. Then I can click on that and then he'll say hello. When I click the green flag, he jumps 50 steps and says hello. And these are the blocks that you're going to be learning throughout the whatever class you're taking uh, how to use or maybe you're just learning on your own so at the top you have motion and then as you progress down through this list you have the looks which is how your characters may look or behave you have your sounds that you can also for sounds you can uh, import or um, there's a whole library of available sounds available to you in scratch and that will be discussed <clears throat> later on here are your events. We just looked at one of them. Again, these are color coded. So these are all things, these are oftentimes called hat blocks because they're at the top. There's something that initiates or starts some code. So it goes on the top of all the other code. You can't put code above it. It also kind of looks like a hat. I don't know if that's why they call it that, but it's hat because it's on top. Then you have your controls. These are the things that are part of all coding languages. Um, if then statements and loops, <clears throat> the types of things that make all programs run. Below that, your sensors. 
Can I tell if one sprite has made contact with another sprite? Can I tell the position of a, of a sprite um, or what backdrop I'm using? That kind of thing. Below that are your operators. So you can do math, add things together, create sentences, uh, several other features, which again, we're just touching on now, we'll come back to later. And variables and my blocks, sort of more advanced features to come up later on. So I'm not gonna go into detail about those right now. Uh, there are a couple of other tabs up here at the top, depending on what you've selected. So if you've selected a sprite, like I have this character, Ben, then I can play with Ben's costume. This is the drawing area. This allows for different kinds of animation. Or if I want to change, I don't know, Ben's hair color, for example, I can click on the bucket and I can make his hair purple, if that's what I want to do. And also for each of those sprites, you have some, sometimes they come with default sounds. So he has a referee whistle. Oh. Well, I guess that's the cheer, sorry. Here's the referee whistle. And there's a bunch more of those, which you can go down here to choose sounds. And they have them categorized from crazy to space, percussion, animal sounds. So as you move your mouse over, you can hear what that sound sounds like. So if I want, uh, I don't know, Ben to make a growling sound, I'm gonna just import that in. And then I can go to my code and I can say, say hello. And then I go to my sounds and I'm gonna say, play the sound growl. All right, I don't know why the scratch cat is here. So that's just a basic layout of what you can expect to see uh, in, in any new Scratch program.